morning, everybody. Uh, we're on to the next phase of getting the garden ready to plant. Uh, this morning, Jim is going to bring Ken out, and he's going to spring tooth harrow the garden. And the reason he does that is just to smooth out all the the uh, ridges and ruts and make it a nice um, smooth planting medium for me to um, start planting the garden. Um, it's always kind of like it's a clean slate for the year. All the, the weeds from last year are gone and um, I get to start over and plant the garden the way I want to this year and so come along with us as we uh, get everything ready to go for the year. Uh, Jim's been busy this morning already. He's had Buck and Lady and Bill and they have been um, harrowing out in the big field with the spring tooth and he's getting ready to plant the corn and he said it's still pretty wet in some spots but by the end of this week he's hoping that he's going to be able to get his corn crop in for the year. As you can see Jim's getting Ken ready to go and uh, while he gets him ready to go I'll just show you that we have the corn planter here. Jim was over this morning at um, a friend of his getting the right plate to put in the corn planter so that the corn seeds get dropped the right amount uh, according to the size of the seed through the right plate so that the the right amount gets dropped at a time and it gets planted the right thickness and the right spacing. So uh, he's got that ready to go. I think he's got the the seed. He's using some seed from last year and some new seed and he talked to his supplier Ronnie today and getting that ready to go. Good morning Ken. Jim just told me he's putting on a line extension so he can stand easily, more easily behind the spring tooth. So here I'm just putting the spring tooth, lowering it down so it's going to dig in the right depth that I want it to be pulling at. And off we go. When my horses are on a loose evener like this, whether it's one horse or two, I like them to always keep the tugs tight. And when I'm turning sharp turns like this, I want them to keep the tugs tight and not have that slack. I don't want them to just to stop and back up and then turn. I want them to keep tight tugs so that they never get into trouble by stepping over the tugs and uh, it just makes for a smoother, better pull around corners. It sure does cover a lot of area one time around. This size spring tooth is definitely not made for just a single horse. I believe it's an eight foot set of spring tooths. But uh, when you're in a small little spot like this in a garden, it works really good just to have one because of the maneuverability of one horse. With two, it's a lot more difficult to turn around like this. 
Generally, with this Springtooth, I would have two and a lot of times even three horses on it. One thing I don't like about the Springtooth is because I'm trying to smooth everything out and kind of bring the dirt ground and the sod ground together, I'm coming up onto the sod ground and pulling some of the sod and grasses into the dirt ground, which I don't like to do, but it's just one of those things that has to happen to make a, a smoother, better seed bed. This is way too much garden for the two of us. Uh, we're gonna see about doing something new this year, potentially. We're gonna look into potentially planting a little bit of grain at the end of the garden. But I'm doing a little research on that. Oh, what do you think? I think it looks good. I mean, sure, there's lots of little stones in here and whatnot, but I can... But should also... I run it crossways again or no? Maybe I should just because... Well, it'll be easier to plant because I won't see all these things the and... The rows, you mean? Yeah. I mean, I hate to make Ken do all that extra work. Good one. So I planted the garden and here we are a couple days later. So it's after supper and it's been a hot, hot day for May for us. But um, we're out in the garden and I've gotten a fair amount of the garden planted. But I realize there's so much of the garden I'm not going to need this year. We over planted last year. We had too much stuff and too many vegetables, more than we need. And we want to try something new this year. We're going to try planting a little bit of wheat, and we really don't know exactly what we're doing, but we are going to give it a try. I called my brother Brent. He used to uh, grow some grain in Vermont. He has an organic or had an organic dairy farm, and he grew some wheat and spelt down there. And so I called him up and asked him, or I, I messaged him and asked him um, a couple things about planting wheat. And we didn't decide to do this till a lot later than we should have in the year. So I don't have the seed that I needed. Um, but I went to the store where I buy my flour from. It's a bulk food store, um, Martin's Country Store. And they have... Um, wheat kernels that you can grind up and make bread out of and I messaged Brent and asked him if we could use this for planting because I decided to see if these seeds would sprout I just put them in a wet paper towel for a couple days and Lo and behold, they really did sprout. As you can see, there's a whole bunch of them. Like every last one of them that I planted sprouted. They're doing great. So I thought, why not? And he said he thought it might be okay. So we're going to try it. What Jim just did was go over it one time with uh, Springtooth Harrow because the problem we might have is the weed seed. And Brent said they usually start, my brother said they start it early in the spring to get ahead of the weeds. Well, we're not that early in the spring. So, but, so we don't know if this is going to work or not, but it could be a cover crop if it gets too weedy and just miserable. So 
that's what we've done. We've just gone over it with the spring tooth. And Jim is going to plant it. I think he's going to broadcast it by hand. And then he's going to pack it down with the horses. Before we start planting, I just wanted to make one more row just in case uh, we need an extra row for something I forgot I needed to plant. Just go break it down inside that row. Okay. This is the job you're good at. This is a row marker that Jim made for me last year that makes planting much easier. I just have to keep my rows straight. You're doing fine. G over a little bit. You're doing fine. You're fine. Okay, so I'm going to plant this, this wheat. I uh, don't know how well it's going to work, but we're going to use this old uh, cyclone bag. This is actually fairly common. You can still buy these nowadays. And you just put the wheat in there. And then there's adjustment to say how much wheat, how much to put on for different crops. And we have no idea what we're doing, so we're just going to guess. I was going to just throw it on by hand. And I may still if it does, doesn't work, but we're going to try this first and uh, see what happens. I would say plant it thick. The soil is well, I can always throw some fertile more. and maybe it'll crowd out the weeds. Yeah. If I remember correctly, there's a hole in there somewhere, duct but there. we'll see. Yeah. Maybe not. Good old duct tape. That's coming out a little bit, but not too bad. So you want me to walk down like, right there's... There. Yep, right there, three feet from that row. Okay. That's not enough. Ooh, black the black flies are out tonight. This is quite a handy unit. It spreads the seed quite nicely as we walk down through the field. It spreads it out a lot evener than I could by doing it by hand. She goes. So this is bag number two because we decided to just make sure it had plenty of seed on here. Away. Yeah, it does. It's a broadcaster. It's gone over to my uh, other stuff, which that's not a big deal. I can just pull them out if I want to. So this is going to be exciting. Try something new. So the reason I have the team tonight is because I needed to run the spring food for the field of course, but Ken could have done that easy enough himself. But then I also knew after I planted the corn, planted the wheat, I wanted to use the cultipacker and that's the roller behind this spring tooth that I have set up here. And to do all that by in one operation would be a little much for one horse, but and if I just tried to pull the cultipacker there'd be nothing to hold it back and it would run right into him and that would cause trouble. So that's why I decided just to hitch up to the team tonight. It's a little bit tricky getting around the corners, but we'll make it work. Looks like it's, most of it's got covered up with this little arrangement.
sure is noisy. Boy, that really looks nice. Looks great. Looks good? Yeah, looks really good. It covered up most of it. Okay. We'll see what happens. All righty. I just got a couple more rows to plant and we'll be all done planting the garden this year. I gotta put my tomatoes in, plant some carrots, and I've got everything marked off as to what it is. I've got my peppers out here and they're protected a little bit with some containers that I put over them just because the wind really does a number on them and sometimes the sun. So I just put them inside some little plastic containers and my um, cabbage, I did the same thing. So, so anyways, we'll see how the garden grows. Mm -hmm.